Hello everybody, my name is Manfred Buchmann, Solution Architect at Nutanix and today I want to show you how to set up Splunk Smart Store with Nutanix Object Services. So here I'm on the Prism interface, we see the IP address and we see our clusters at the moment. Let's go into the services, you just select uh, the services, object services, objects are loading and then you see our object stores. You can have multiple object stores on the Nutanix. I select my MB1, as stands for Manfred, and here we see the buckets. And for our Splunk deployment, I create an additional uh, bucket. Uh, so here it's the Smart Store bucket. Um, you see what I type in here. Um, I don't enable versioning. You can have versioning enabled, doesn't matter. You just need to enable it in Splunk. I keep it easy. Just give the bucket a name. Do the creation of the bucket here. And here you see the Smart Store created. Our bucket is there. The next thing is what I'm doing is um, I go back and I create basically a user who can access the smart store. We also can have an active directory on LDAP configured and just take it from the LDAP. But as I don't have configured one, I keep it simple. I just add a an user, um, add a new uh, guy in here. That's my smart store at ntnxlab.local. That's my local address here. Uh, just as an example, put it in, uh, press the next key then, and we just create a user. Just press next. Here it is. The system generates the keys. Now you have to download the keys. It's basically your ID and your access key to access an S3 store. Uh, don't lose it or you have to uh, recreate or delete it. So I close it, I go back. Go back to my uh, object store, went into the buckets, and I have all the information. I take my smart store here, you see it here. Um, I also can see what's going on from a performance perspective. So I move into performance, for example. Here you see the performance. As we have nothing connected to this bucket at the moment, you see nothing, but you see the request, the throughput. So if anything going, what's going on in the system, you see it really here at the performance level. Uh, the other thing I'm now doing, um, I share the bucket I created, or I give my user access, or I give the smarter user access um, to this bucket and read and write access, as we expect Splunk to write data into this one, so we give them read and write access. I save it and that's it basically. Just press the save button. And now my user has access and I can use the smart store um, for my Splunk installation. So that's all what I have to do on the object services. Um, now I'm moving uh, on, going on to my uh, Splunk system, that's a Linux machine. I run Splunk uh, version 8 in here. Splunk is uh, stopped on this version. So I just type it in, for example, that I have stopped it. You see it's down. So I'm on the Splunk machine, the um, Ubuntu version here. I'm in the opt Splunk bin directory. Splunk is shut down. And here's my famous typo for the shutdown. Now just to show you, um, keep the things easy. The next thing what I have to do is I have to change the indexes.conf file uh, to set up my new index that smart store leverages the S3 store. Unfortunately, smart store cannot set up during the web interface. You need to set it up in the indexes file. And I go into etc system local and edit the indexes file. Uh, indexes.conf, that's the file you have to edit. I already have one uh, S3 store configured. I have the one uh, for Manfred, what you see here um, on the Splunk DB. And what I just do is I copy everything and then I edit it for my new created um, object, for my new bucket basically. So just select everything, um, cut and paste everything. I take it down, select everything, copy. Because there are old access keys in there, so and a different access. So you see here again, I copied everything, so I renamed it. I say that's my, my uh, smart store. 
for that three name. Just a few typos. So we wait until I have done it. Just delete the old index. Rename the index. So that's the index name what I'm doing here on the smart store. The home pass is the pass for the local cache and the local file system. The same um, for the um, uh, cold pass, the thread pass for the um, uh, statistical data. So all is locally and acts as a cache and then it goes back into the remote pass. So I just um, put a different pass in here for the caches. I say it's my smart store pass. Same for cold pass, same for thread pass, so that everything is separated and the caches are in the right locations. The documentation says you don't need a cold pass, but when I set it up, I run into an issue that on the startup it says it needs a cold pass, whatever happens, I need to recheck, but probably you can run it without a cold pass, but I left it in, doesn't really matter. Um, as the key thing is the remote pass um, down there and the remote pass here points to my uh, volume on the S3 storage which I need to change for the new one. Statistical points also to the right local cache. And the key is if you enable a smart store is basically the data is separated from your CPU here so you can grow um, data independent from CPUs. If you need more CPUs, you grow up more server cycles. If you need more data, you add just more capacity nodes into the game. So here I add a new volume and my volume will be um, the smart star volume. So I just um, name it SMR here and here I have to set up the volume, the index volume. So I have to call it SMR as I named it on top of here. So just call the volume SMR. Then I need to tell him which bucket the pass S3 uh, colon slash slash Splunk need to change it to my new bucket, which I named Smart Store or Smart SDR um, on the object store. So add my new bucket. The next thing is um, adding the new access key and the new secret key, which I downloaded um, during my creation. So you see here. I just look up my downloads. Here you see from the smart store um, user the access keys and the secret keys. I would not keep it so open just uh, for security reasons, but that's just for the easy setup and to demo how the thing really works or how easy it is to set up. So I copy the access keys, um, later on copy the security key, um, change everything in the index.conf file. Ah, will take a few minutes while I'm editing this one. Um, so you see now the value as you can grow large amounts of data and um, with the Nutanix object store we have a high performance object store so you can get a gigabit or gigabyte performance on objects here in the object store so it's um, not a big challenge to run most or 90% of your data out of the object store with Splunk. Separate compute from data, grow it independently. Also simplify recovery as yes. local indexes don't have to recover, you just point them to the object store. Or if you create new instances, uh, you point them to the external object stores and don't have to copy data. So all these capabilities what the smart store brings you and the Nutanix high performance object store gives you also high performance to run nearly 80-90% of all your data out of the S3 object store um, and simplify the Splunk environment and simplify your management and here you see I added access keys everything is in there now I only have to save it you see the remote endpoint that's my IP address of my object store in this example um, have to save it, everything is built in, my bucket, the smart store, access key, secret key, um, IP address, and here we go. I just save it, then I go back um, in my binary directory, startups blank, and here we go. So let's give a few minutes until I'm back in the directories. So super easy. You make the few entries you have seen the entries you can copy this one 
um, and just try to set up your smart store with Nutanix objects. Um, start up Splunk. If you type anything wrong in there during the Splunk startup, you will see error messages and they will not start and will tell you, hey, please fix this one or fix this one. But here you see everything is done, everything is set up. It tells me, hey, go um, on to HTTP Splunk Demo 8000. Um, I have not set up a name service for this one, so the only thing I'm doing is I take my local IP address, I go to my local host, port 8000, connect to the Splunk server. So just here, let's set the port and go from here. Up here we are running, we are in the Splunk server. Add my user, put in uh, admin, password, the Splunk Enterprise, just in there. And then you see the storage under settings. If you go into settings, indexes and here you see your indexes and if you go down there you see my s3 indexes there's an index manfred which already was done earlier and we see our smart str and they show up as unlimited um, that's our s3 instances so looks like normal nothing specific um, all done all set up and that's how easy it is to set up the smart um, smart store for splunk with nutanix objects and here you go. If you need more capacity, you just add more capacity at the object store. That's it. Or you create new indexes, put it in different buckets that you have easy ear management. Uh, up to you. So really easy. And then you create your data inputs and point them to the different indexes. And with this one, have a lot of fun. Looking forward to see you on my next movie uh, where I will talk about a new topic.